especially in marketing, we got to get comfortable with failure. And that doesn't mean that you don't meet the goal, but that does mean that you're going to get it wrong sometimes and that you're going to have to try again and pivot and change. And I think that goes right into your conversation around skill sets is we should always be learning, always be looking outside of what we know today. And it's hugely important to the team is to be able to build a skill set. They might not know everything about, let's say, AI, right? AI is coming in. That's a huge example. We need to be able to give our teams the opportunity to learn, um, to be curious. We talked about that originally. I think that's huge. And that's okay, right? They're not expected to know everything, but to really anticipate, you know, some of the changes that we might have to make and make sure that they build their skill set personally to go to go do it. Yeah, couldn't agree with you more. I think that's oh, no, a, really, that. a really good um, a really good aspect of the team is to make sure that they're curious and that they're getting the skills that they need to do it, to be able to go forward with anything that we do. I love that. I love that. And kind of that going forward with confidence as well, because there's one thing yeah. in terms of kind of democratizing access to skills and really supporting that. But it has to go further than that, doesn't it, in terms of helping people to actually apply those skills in their roles or new, or new roles, too. So for me, it's kind of that mixture and getting that balance right. And again, some research I've been involved in recently was talking about learning agility, probably being the number one skill of our, of our time, followed by things like creative thinking, um, EQ, AI fluency, et cetera. So if you put all those together, if you had a kind of number one skill to kind of invest in or invest in yourself, you know, to share with the audience or something you think that's being undervalued at the moment, kind of what would that be? I know you mentioned resilience there and I, and I couldn't agree more. I mean, definitely curiosity, I think, is right up there too. Um, you know, it's probably so simple, but to be able to take action, yes. right, is to be able to come into a situation uh, to make a decision based on all the facts that you think that you may or may not have, uh, but to have an opinion and to take to take an action forward to go do something. I think one of the things I've watched with all the data, especially in marketing that we are um, able to get now, and it's all fantastic, but you can get analysis, you know, paralysis, let's say, right, where there's so much and it's conflicting almost, right? That, that happens to all of us about it could lead this way or that way. You have to make a call and you have to, to make an educated decision and not be afraid to take action and to go execute something. And that is, you know, something that I think we really have to encourage in the team and encourage for our younger team members coming in is don't be afraid to take action and to go cause something to happen. If it's wrong, we'll go fix it, right? We can go change it, but not to sit on the sidelines, right? Is to be able to, to get out there and to go do something and, and try to impact the results that we have. So, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I love that. I love that. And kind of coupled with that, uh, we talk about learning. So unlearning, this, the ability and the willingness to unlearn as well. I think at all times at the moment, given all the new things we're learning, the new discoveries, uh, whether it's from a scientific point of view or what data is showing, shining new insights into, that ability to unlearn, I think, is never going to have mattered more. So I totally agree with you on that. I think that's absolutely fascinating and kind of bringing that all together. Uh, and I had a conversation about this recently. And we kind of end up in a, in a summary saying the ability to gain new knowledge, I think, will be valued higher than the knowledge we have as it, as it is now. Do you agree on that? Because I think yeah, for totally. me, it maybe brings it all together. I totally agree. And that's where I think data has helped us, right? Yeah. Data is able to show the team what's worked. We, we all have gut reactions in marketing about what we think should work, what we uh, how a, a customer will resonate with a message. I think the customer, you'll see the data, you'll see what works and what doesn't work. And we've done many things at Fire where we thought would have worked, it didn't, and we can pivot. So I think to your point about unlearning, it's like, okay, we have to look at the data and say, we're not going to do that again. We're going to change paths. So, and having that ability to go and release and go, okay, I'm not going to keep doing it the same way I've been doing it is, is hugely important. And it's harder than people think, right? Because you, you have learned a certain way, you have brought a certain talent and skill set, and having to change that and not be afraid to do that is something that I think everybody's going to have to learn as, as we go forward. 
Absolutely. And, and AI, I mean, going back to the AI subject as well, which is obviously every, everywhere and, and different flavors yeah. of regenerative AI as well. But that can actually you know, support us from a learning and development perspective too. Right. You know, for example, identify learning styles and things like our metacognition. It can really help us to kind of learn smarter and identify what works for us as well. So I think that's another interesting area that's maybe a bit underexplored at the moment. But I'd love to kind of give a shout out for that too. But but from your take, um, what are you seeing most from a marketing perspective? perspective around you know the hype versus the actualization of use of AI and how to stand out with you know all the talk that's happening at the moment on this very subject. Yeah I mean everybody says AI now, right everything is attached to it especially for my you know marketing um, uh, uh, team like right we have to be careful not to just say the word AI without having the meat behind absolutely. it. Absolutely. So we want to we're spending a lot of time now of are we designating this correctly as AI or are we just trying to add the word, right? But I think from an AI perspective for me personally, as I run the team, it's it's going to make huge leaps and bounds in our productivity, our ability to scale, efficiency of the team. I think those are things that I'm really excited about in content creation, being a global team, translations, things that make it easier for my guys to react and go out there and, and, and put messages out in the market at a much scalable level. So... I think those are the things that I'm really excited about uh, right now. And you know where it goes, you know who knows. There's every day it seems to be changing. I mean, the conversations, the videos you can create, just it's exponential um, with that. So you know, I encourage my team. Let's be excited about it, but be cautious, right, about how we go utilize it. So that's that's something that we're working on right now, and absolutely investing in their skill set of AI training and things like that as marketers is, is you know very personally important to me so that they feel comfortable with it, that they can then go and execute against uh, our campaigns utilizing it. I love that. I love that. And again, the confidence you mentioned there, absolutely vital. And I can hear that, you know, when you're talking about the experiences with your team, there's a real enablement there. And I love that. I think it's the, miss it's the missing link between kind of training and development and actualization and having that culture of, of kind of a non-blame culture, if you know what I mean. When you're learning through experience, you're going through things, you're trying. And if there is an issue, you're learning from that, reflecting it and putting it back in. That's how you get an innovation culture, isn't it? So I love the examples that you're bringing to the fore there. It's brilliant. Yes, great. No, I mean, I don't want anyone to be afraid to come back and go, I didn't know it. I didn't understand that. Because um, that's not going to do me any good. My job as a leader is to bring out the best of my people. And if they are afraid to fail or make mistakes or not know something, I'm not doing my job as a leader. So I need to you know, make sure that they understand that whoever has been on the team, whether they be new or somebody who's been with me for years. I think that's really important. And, and, and we don't do enough of that. I think we expect people to be perfectionists and to get it right on the first try. And that's just not reality. And that's not bringing out the best um, in what people have to offer. So you know, I'm very passionate about that with my organization, and I have been for many years. So uh, it's it's something that I'll continue to foster with my work. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And you mentioned that word foster, and there's a kind of analogy that's coming into my head as you're talking there between leadership and teaching. And I'm just remembering going back to some, to some teacher training a few, a few years ago, and there was an author, I think his name was Clapper, a UK author, but they talked about teaching as facilitation. And I think what you're talking about there, that facilitation about bringing the best out in a team and the different examples you, you brought to the fore about doing that. I think it's a really powerful kind of segue there. And you brought me back to, to AI as an example of that facilitation and action too. kind of two, two examples of it in my head. So chat GPT, obviously lots of other examples of what we could be using as an example there too. But I was doing some work with students and they were looking at how can we use this, you know, for homework and, and that type of thing. And we looked at what they got back and how to kind of fact check and look at how good that response actually was. And it was fascinating to look at where it was actually quite strong, but where there were kind of things that needed to be kind of looked at in more depth, should we say. Alternatively, with a marketeer, had a conversation only last week about how they were asked to kind of write in a certain style for a certain type of audience and publication. And they kept going back to their manager and they couldn't quite get it in the right form. But actually using that tool, it helped them to identify how to kind of align it better to that audience fit and the demands of that particular magazine and style. 
and they got the feedback back. God, that's right on. That's what we were looking for. So it's really an interesting example of you know, the strengths here, there are areas that need to be worked on, but sharing the good and, and where there's challenges, et cetera, is so important to be able to have those conversations and do that hands on experimentation, isn't it? It's so, so important. Yeah, and I think AI is a tool for the team. Yes. Right? Exactly what you were saying. It can spark ideas, it can help clarify something that we're confused on. It's just another tool in our toolbox of what we can utilize to go do what we have to do. So I think it it, it will bring a lot of value to absolutely. the team. It absolutely will. I think you know have to know how to use it. And that's the portion that you know we are really um, spending some time on is how do you prompt it? to give you the information that you need. So that's because it is a different language sometimes, right? Absolutely. You need to be, um, you need to know how to be able to use it in order to get the most out of it. And that's the skill set that we're talking about really developing that muscle we need to flex that we probably haven't been doing. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love that. And it's, it's almost like the, the keys, the keys of access, isn't it? In many ways, it's like learning any language, isn't it? Whether it's a foreign language or anything around a technical discipline, you need those building blocks and those foundations. That sounds yeah. really interesting in exactly. terms of Yeah, exactly. definitely. Exactly. Oh, love that. I, I was going to ask you next, you know, often you see, and we've had less of this. We've got, I think we've got a little bit more balance overall. Um, but I remember going back a few years and kind of every story that looked around AI, you know, the, the sci-fi language, should we say, and, and a lot of fear uh, kind of gets into those titles. Now we kind of get different extremes in, in different varieties, but there still is obviously a fear. It's a natural, you know, human resistance to change in many ways, isn't it? But I think those powerful examples of how we can show AI is a complementary strength and working in partnership with us can be really important to kind of allay those fears in many ways. I'd love to kind of what you're seeing here about people's fears, about not having enough experience of AI and how you're kind of looking at this and empowering people. Again, some of your examples with your team, I think are great and kind of as a starting point right. for that. No, I think everybody, let's let's face it, we are all going to feel like we don't know it because it is so new and it's changing so rapidly, right? So you're going to have that fear that you just don't know everything and you don't know what's coming. And when we don't have that, we feel like we're behind. I think it's more spending the time to get to know what it really is, how it can help you besides the hype, right? Because there's a lot of hype going out, which I think can increase the feeling of not knowing it and the anxiety of not having the right skill set. So I think one is to spend the time and to get to know what it can help you with within your um, you know, job role and function. Getting that knowledge so then it doesn't seem so overwhelming, I think is going to be really important. And so that's my job, I think, as the team lead is to make sure that I'm giving them the opportunity to get exposure to it and to go take training classes and things like that and to give them access to it so that they can go play around with it. So I think it's really that that knowledge, right? Building the knowledge about it and not being afraid of it. It is here. It's going to continue to expand. We're, we're not going to be able to get away from it. We need to be able to really understand it. So that's, I think, I think that's the big part for me is just to take the fear out of it. It's okay. We'll figure it out as a team. Let's go do it. Um, right. So, but I think everybody's probably wondering, uh oh, how do I keep up? Um, and it's it's just something we're going to have to work with our teams on. Absolutely, and, and as we said earlier, I think with any kind of tech change, it's that education kind of going hand in hand that makes such a difference as well. And that helps to kind of build that confidence and kind of grow as you do and making that information accessible, both from a team perspective and more broadly as well. I also think is a massive part of that. And that's something I've always been really impressed with with Spiral as well. You do such great research and you make that very freely accessible. So I think that's great too. And I, and I know one very recently, actually, your new ebook, and I love the title of this as well, given what we've been talking about, it's literally called Bracing for Impact, isn't it? In terms of how AI will transform digital industry. So we'll put a little link um, to the audience here about where you can go for that as well, because I think that's a really good job at looking at some of the kind of macro level and broader factors right. around AI and the changes it's making. So we'll share that too, because I think it brings to, together a lot of the topics we've been talking about and brings more of that access out there. So great. I love that. Yeah. No, definitely. great. Please check it out, because we did really put a lot of effort into it. and. Uh, did a lot of research to your point, and um, I happen to love the title as well because I think it, it really does go right to the whole brace for impact, right? Because there's so much new coming.
Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And I kind of bringing all this together, I think what I found you know, brilliant from this conversation is you're not just kind of doing activities that democratise the accessibility to learning these new skills and being empowered as part of a team and making that knowledge accessible more broadly too. There's a real focus is on what happens next and the actualization of this as well so it's very holistic so I absolutely love that because I think that's what we need it's it's the accessibility but the confidence to actually apply these two and having trusted sources of where to go so Shell thank you so much it's been great thank spending you it's been great to talk to you appreciate it